Hi guys. So in this lesson, we're going to model a real life situation using a sinusoidal function and graph. So look, sinusoidal graphs, we can use them to model anything really that kind of goes, anything that goes up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. Uh, well, waves is a common use for them in, in physics. Um, tides is the example I'm going to do here. Uh, temperature in the day, it gets hot, then it gets cold, then it gets hot, or even over the course of the year. In fact, we can use it to model um, to model the amount of ice in the poles and see that it's actually deteriorating over time. Um, but what we're going to look at here is, yeah, tides. So th in this example, at low tide, the depth of water is two meters. At high tide, six hours later, the depth is 6.8 meters. Find a trigonometric function that models the depth of water d in the harbor t hours after low tide. Okay, let's try and break that down. What we want is we want to try and make a graph. So we're going to make a graph and the x-axis is going to be time in hours and the y-axis is going to be the depth of the water. Now he says, at low tide, the depth of water in a harbor is two meters. Okay, I'm gonna draw that two meter line here. So let's say this is, this is two meters. It's two meters, or let's just call it two. We'll assume it's in meters. Okay, so that's two. At high tide, six hours later, the depth is 6.8 meters. So let's go to 6.8. So that's 2, 4, 6, 6.8. Now, obviously, this doesn't have to be accurate. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate um, because I'm, the function that I get will be perfectly accurate. Okay, so this is low tide. And then six hours later, it's going to be at... Um, high tide and then it's going to come back down to low tide so the let's go with all right this is going to be six hours six hours later it's going to be at high tide so let's say this is six let's say here which would mean it'll come back down to low tide after 12 let's say that's six here this would be 12, let's say there, okay. This is 12 and this is hours. So we're gonna start at two and by the way, it's gonna go up to 6.8 here, 6.8. We're gonna go, we're gonna go up to six and down to 12. So let's try and draw that graph. We're gonna go start here. We're gonna go up to six, up to 6.8 at six and then down, back down to two at six. So it goes something like this, up and down. Okay, what kind of function is this? Well, you think this, the sine function normally goes up and then down and then up, but it's slightly different to that. It would like a sine function would be starting here. It goes up and then it goes down below where it started. This to me is more like a negative cosine function, but you could actually use both depending on which one you want to do. Um, but let's get the let's get the equation of the principal axis. So remember, this is halfway between. This is going to be right halfway between the two there, between two and 6.8. So this, this is going to equal um, two plus 6.8 divided by two. So, okay, let's over here, we need to figure out what we want, how we want to write it. Let's say we want to write it in the form f of x, not f of x, we're going to do d of t d of t because it's depth in time and let's say we're going to do a let's do a cos of b x plus c 
plus d. Okay, I can get a. a is equal to max minus min over 2. 6.8. Let's do this. Let me write that down. Max minus min over 2, which is 6.8 minus 2 over 2. 4.8 over 2, which is 2.4. Now, this, this is the size of A, is 2.4. Now, because it's cosine, I need to decide, is it positive or negative? Well, you see, a normal cosine function comes down like this and then up. That would be my normal cosine function, but that's not what's happening. It's starting down and it's going up and then down. So it's flipped upside down, which means this is going to be negative. So I'm going to say A, therefore A is actually equal to negative 2.4. Okay, next thing. Actually, can I just let me bring all of this over here? Okay. Let's say. Next one, let's try and find b. So we know the rule. 2 pi over b equals period. I said this rule is important. It comes up all the time. b is here, and we know the period is 12. So the period is 12. 2 pi over b equals 12. Rearrange b equals 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. Okay, I have b. It's pi over 6. c is how much we translate it right or left. Now, I'm not tra I'm not translating it at all because I'm starting here and I'm going up. So, there's no translation required. And then d would be well, d is max plus min over 2. And max plus min over 2 is 6.8 plus 2 over 2, which is 8.8 .8 over 2, which is 4.4. Therefore, my, my um, function is d of t equals a negative 2.4 cos of pi over 6 x, there's no c, so it's just x, close bracket, plus d is plus 4.4. .4. Okay, I want to actually show you that in Desmos. So, I encourage you to kind of use Desmos whenever you can, but imagine I now have my negative 2.4 cos um, pi over 2, sorry, pi over 6 x plus 4.4. .4. Is this the is this the function that I was looking for? Well, it starts at at 2, it goes up to 6.8 at 6, and it gets down to 2 again at um, 12. Perfect. That's the function. So I know I have the correct function. What I what I want to show you here though is how I could also have used sine. Now Watch this. Let's say I used sine, because sine and cos are just translations of each other. Watch this. If I do 2.4 sine pi over 6, because I still have this, I still have the same period, and then I do x, and I do plus 4.4. .4. What happens is, it's very similar, it's the same period, it's the same the same minimum and the same maximum, but it's, it needs to be translated to the right because at the moment he's starting at um, he's starting at zero four point four, but we know low tide is at two, so he should be starting at two. But if I move this whole thing to the right three, because look his this this minimum is at three and this maximum is at three, so if I move this blue function to the right, three units, it'll give me the exact same function. And the way I do it, 
this is why I'm talking about that letter C, is if I do x plus 3, like this, sorry, not x plus 3, x minus 3, because I need to move it to the right 3. So if I do x minus 3, look, I get the exact same thing. So that graph's still there. It's just um, this blue graph has now gone on top of it because it's the very same graph. Now it starts at 0, 2, max at 6, 6.8, and min at 12, 2, which is exactly what I want. So actually, both of these, if it says find, if it gives a, a question as vague as this, where it says find me a trigonometric function, then either is fine. But often it'll say find it in the form a cos of bx plus c plus d and then obviously you have to use the cosine function but i think it is important if you if you understand how these are actually the same thing you've gone a long way to understanding both transformations and sinusoidal modeling and graphing okay that's it um there's plenty places where there's plenty of real life applications where sinusoidal modeling occurs and you'll see them in past papers, all different sorts of questions. Fer Ferris wheels is another good one that comes up in exams quite often where you're modeling the height of a Ferris wheel over time. I think the best way, if you've no idea what's going on, the best way is to actually get out a, get out a set of axes and start drawing. Th try to think about where it is at each point, like here at the start it was at low tide and then it started to go higher and um, got to its maximum at six and then it's got to its minimum at 12. Okay, see you in the next lesson.